Hello everyone, welcome back to Demet channel for trending political stories and economic related issues and anything else that's just trending in Zambia. Make sure you follow me for all those updates and uh, if you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe and you can also check out my channel profile and uh, choose uh, videos from the playlist that best suit your interests. With that said, let's jump right into it. Confidence that finally they had come to a place where they're almost concluding the extradition process for a fugitive member of parliament uh, for Petaoke, um, JJ, JJ Banda. You are, I think, the only person I, I, I can recall that you disputed the position of uh, government on this matter and you called it all lies. Uh, is there the truth that you, you know that uh, the, the minister doesn't know and the nation doesn't know that you were the only old one out to contradict the position of government? So for me, Honorable Jack Mwimbo, Minister of Home Affairs and Interior Affairs, is not a believable man. I saw it for myself when JJ was abducted and went missing for a period of three, four days. And then we received those phone calls in the night that was found, and JJ claimed that he was tortured and he needed medical treatment. He was transported from Kafiwa District Hospital to Medland Hospital. I was personally present with other members of parliament. And we saw the conduct of the police under the charge of Jack Mwimbu. And Jack Mwimbu, as you heard from the testimony of uh, JJ's sister, was actually on the premises as Minister of Home Affairs at 0304 to take to ensure that JJ was removed from a place of uh, his treatment and of his choice, the choice of the family, a Midland hospital, to uh, a, a minor Soko hospital. This now was like a second abduction. My phones were confiscated that day and other phones were confiscated for those that attempted to film the event, how they brutally removed his drips and how they brutally removed him from the ward and then took him into a waiting ambulance and whisked him away, you know. So, and then I saw the press conference in the morning. I couldn't believe what the minister was saying. It is there where I realized that Honorable Jack Wimbo can speak with a straight face, look right into the camera, and tell a lie. So when he held that press conference yesterday, Pastor Kennedy, you and I are journalists, so what I did immediately was to call a few of our colleagues in, in, in Harare. Most of them were very busy because there was a SADC Heads of State Summit going on. There's an emergency SADC uh, Heads of State Summit that is going on in Harare. But I reached a few of our journalists and who said, look, we are here with the Minister of uh, Home Affairs, we are here with the Inspector General of Police right here, and what you are telling us doesn't appear to be true. Then I remembered how the police in Harare were saying, no, he's not in police custody. And that's why I put out that uh, uh, information on my page and challenged the minister to tell the truth, and I challenged the minister to show that Jojo was arrested. In the aftermath of this, there are now memes everyone is making fun of the minister and the government that uh, captured, but still at large, captured only to be released, that makes you feel perhaps comforted? Yeah, the, the country is just joining what I witnessed on the first abduction of JJ and how the minister totally told lies. Because JJ, I personally saw him with other, with other members of parliament, there were about four or five of us. He was in great pain, he was complaining that day of pain under his sores, under his sides. And the minister came said, No, 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 JJ is okay. He's okay, he's, he's, he's fine, and uh, he's not been abducted, there's no abduction. JJ proceeded to write. Uh, an affidavit sworn by him, filed in the Lusaka High Court, where he named two senior officials at State House as being part of those that had abducted him. That Minister of Home Affairs has done nothing. His police, Inspector General of Police, has done nothing about those allegations. In fact, they proceeded to charge JJ with criminal, new criminal offenses, some that were settled by the courts of law. They now gave him these charges. First, instead of giving him the medical treatment he needed, instead of allowing his complaint that was brutally abducted, tortured, and that two key senior officials of this country based at State House were involved. Instead of pursuing those allegations, they chose to criminalize JJ, locked him up, and we don't wonder what circumstances they took him to Chipata. They locked up him in prison, and when he finally went missing, he was under the custody of, of, of the government. It would appear that the, the government and the Minister of uh, Internal Security, Jack Mwimbo, would wish this thing to just go away, the abduction, like it never, it never happened. In his press conference yesterday, he never referenced that uh, JJ would have been a victim of abduction. He's interested in bringing him back because 
he escaped you know love custody uh, do you really think that this issue of abduction will ever see the the, the light of day and uh, justice will be served this is why we demand for justice before you pursue matters that occurred in 2015 2016 in Vubri by election why don't you pursue JJ's fear for his life JJ's claims that he was abducted by senior members of state house why don't you pursue those claims how come you seem to exert attention to offenses that, that occurred in 2015 and pay blind eye to the cases that recently happened and this complaint i am not surprised it's called a cover-up a cover-up is even a bigger crime than the actual crime so here they are covering up for what happened to the abduction they don't want zambians to know what happened how jj was abducted and if jj is out there I think they are totally petrified because he may have the truth. He may communicate that truth to the people of Zambia. I think that's why there is this desperate attempt. I personally cannot believe, having been a diplomat, that you have a sadic head of state meeting in Harare. That the president, our head of state, is expected to be among those heads of state. But you've exerted your diplomatic pressure on a police station, on a small matter regarding one of your 156 MPs. Instead of the actual issue that is happening, there is a sadic heads of state meeting where you, your officials, are preparing and the presidents have arrived. But the entire Zambia diplomatic service is pursuing JJ. Isn't that ridiculous? But it shows you that this is a second crime of cover-up. Because cover-up is usually even a bigger crime than the actual crime. Let's, let's talk about the interplay in the, in the bigger scheme of uh, diplomacy. Uh, you have the heads of state happening in Zimbabwe. And that's exactly where you need the extradition, uh, you know, to 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 to, to be um, executed. Uh, but you have somewhat shunned that at that level. I know maybe the minister of foreign affairs and a few juniors could be there. But as as the president of a nation, you you, you haven't gone there. Uh, but you want uh, cooperation cooperation um, to happen. And as you answer that, I want you to. Also, loop in the issue of the statement from the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Grafom Samba. What was that just uh, to surface? Because he says between Zambia Interpol and Harare Interpol, there is a lot of progress that is being made to make sure that uh, JJ is brought to, to book. Yeah, it, it's clearly blunder. This is Zambia and Zimbabwe. Between them, there are tensions. There is poor relations. President Daka in the HLMA missed the meeting uh, of uh, Honorable uh, President, His Excellency President Mnangagwa, who has then been inaugurated. He missed that meeting, if you remember. Then there is currently an extraordinary heads of state summit, and our president chose to be with an American comedian. Look at the optics, they are terrible. Your colleagues are in Harare trying to solve the crisis in Eastern Congo, in you know, Northern Mozambique, in the issues that has happened after the post elections in Mozambique. They want to look at the upcoming elections in Namibia and the tensions. We've just had successful election, elections in Botswana. Clearly, there have been major security issues that have risen in the region. You choose to be with a, an American comedian. So the optics are terribly bad. But your entire diplomatic machinery is exerted on Harare trying to extradite JJ Banda. We look amateurs. We look very bad. You ought to demonstrate good neighborliness. You ought to demonstrate good cooperation. And to Zimbabwe, the way Honorable Kamwili was extradited from Zimbabwe, without a proper, proper lawful process, although they cooperated, it didn't mean that they could do, do it for the second time. So I think this government ought to work on the fundamental issues. And number one, good neighborliness, we need to restore our relationship in Sadiq. We've always been leaders on the African scene. We've always been leaders on the international scene. And we are missing a big mark by being absent from SADC meetings. Let's, let's talk about the timing. The timing from the ruling of the uh, Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, Nelly Muti, who says, I'm giving JJ Banda seven days to show himself, yeah. failure to which I'm going to declare the seat uh, vacant. First of all, let's talk about her legal backing or the lack of it to be the one to declare uh, the seat uh, vacant uh, based on that ruling and then secondly the timing from her ruling to the sudden discovery of where JJ Banda has been all along we didn't know he was just next door until there was this ruling and then we hear oh we knew where he was about two weeks ago and we started the extradition process don't you find this a little bit too much of a coincidence it's not a coincidence the inspector general of police has issued a statement and it traces his 
fit back to 6th uh, November. So this government has known that JJ is in Harare in 6th November. So what is happening in Parliament is properly choreographed. The Inspector General of Police says he was alerted on 6th November that they wrote the first Interpol documents you know, on 12th November and that by on the 19th they had uh, JJ uh, either detained or arrested. So if they knew that JJ was um, in Zimbabwe by, on 6th November, subsequent actions are being done with the full knowledge of what's happening. So the, the minister cannot pretend, neither can the speaker pretend, that these events are not connected and are happening in isolation. Unfortunately, no. I wish to caution Madam Nelly Muti, the speaker of the National Assembly, despite all the infractions she's done, despite limiting and restricting political debate, especially from the opposition in parliament, despite her many rulings that oppress the opposition. This action she wants to do is not only unconstitutional, it's illegal. She doesn't have powers to declare a seat vacant. The only institution that sparks that process in this country is a constitutional court. It's the one that can spark such a declaration. In, in or there are other circumstances where a member of parliament either resigns, a member of parliament dies, or a member of parliament, you know, is, is, is convicted if the appellate process is completed, where a member of parliament uh, is, is, is under those circumstances, the seats can be nullified. For example, if the courts rule in an electoral petition that such seat was not properly uh, elected. So Nelly Muti is trading on illegal ground. But this, this matter cannot be left uh, unattended for uh, as long as JJ Banda wishes to be away. There must be closure to it. Yes, what, what, what must be the process then? The, 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 the executive, no. If there's a matter of contention, the law doesn't provide for it like it is in this case. They are supposed to request the Attorney General to face the Constitutional Court and present this matter. The Speaker can only punish up to 30 days. The Speaker doesn't have powers to declare a seat vacant, even under any, uh, any circumstances other than the ones provided or prescribed. Therefore, they should go to the Constitutional Court. Only the Constitutional Court can fill in the gaps. The so-called lacuna can only be filled in by the Constitutional Court. So we appeal to the uh, executive to take the matter of an absent member of parliament for interpretation to the Constitutional Court, not to break the law in the manner they want to do it. Let, let's take the discussion into, into your bedroom. Uh, your, your party really is a shell of itself. Uh, yeah. you, you, are, you are torn uh, in three uh, factions, and uh, people really don't know uh, where they belong, where to go, who to follow, and all of that. But all, um, as, as, that, as that is not enough, what is happening to your party, you have now some of the senior members of your party who have been locked up and denied bail pending appeal. Do you have any plan on how we are going to address these somewhat, uh, they, they are looking like injustices? Uh, what do you plan to do as, as, as a party uh, to, to make sure that you, you bring, first of all, order yeah. to your party and also you address these seemingly uh, unjust you know, maneuvers? Well, first of all, our party is not a share. I think this is what brings consternation to President Daka in the HLMA. Because whatever he has done to a party, he finds that our MPs are largely intact. He finds that our mayors, our council chairpersons are largely intact. He finds that our members are largely intact. He imposes this leader, and no one follows such a leader. He has imposed a third leader, and no one follows such a leader. That's what petrifies him. That what holds, what's the glue that holds the patriotic front together? Hence, the sustained attacks against the party. First of all, to blame it for everything that the country is going through, to pretend that this was a party, a criminal enterprise, they've heightened propaganda against the former president, uh, Edgar Lungu, all in an attempt to destroy the patri but patriotic front. All this have been in vain. They are using what is called lawfare. Now, lawfare is a use of the law in punishing your political opponents. For example, you arrest your political opponents on trumped up charges. You relieve very old cases, as you have seen, the broad cases from 2014, in the case of GDM, 2013 cases. Before he resigned, you know, he resigned in 20, I think he resigned in 2013 as Minister of Defense. Those cases 10 years ago are the ones that GBM is facing. Honorable Davis Chama, a Mongo, a case of 2016, is facing those charges. So they're using lawfare, the use of the law, to oppress um, the opposition. They can use, for example, tax authorities to invade your business, 
check that you're tax compliant and ensure that they bankrupt you. They are using all these mechanisms. And there's a new issue where all our, all our people, first of all, are suffering long detentions. Members of the opposition, not just the PF. Look at the case of our dear brother Thomas Ziambo, who was in police custody or for 16 days going into 17 days. They are using those cases of long detention. Honorable Nakachinda was detained for nine days, going to 10 days. I was detained, I've been arrested three times. The attempt, first of all, is to silence the opposition. That all of us must be quiet as this dictatorship reigns. That's what they are doing, that's what they want. Look at the case of recent cases. GBM, Nixon Chilangwa, Wanzia Kampiongo, Ronald Chitotela, Kalumba Chifumbe, Devi Kaniki, Chavu Chitotela, Kunda Chitotela, Francis Mchema, Bowman Lusambo. They've all been convicted and the courts have refused to give them bail pending appeal. This was an automatic uh, issue because your right to appeal is a constitutional right. Therefore, even your bail, though it's discretionary because now you are, you know, you are a convicted person, it's almost automatic because you are pleading your innocence. All these have been denied bail pending appeal. Clearly, they are executive instructions to ensure that don't give them bail, don't allow them, in some cases, even refuse the appeal. And this is what is happening. Uh, and it's extremely dangerous. You are, you are breaking the Constitution. The Constitution has given you the right to innocence, right to appeal, right to complete the entire due process of the law, including appealing up to the Supreme Court. It's your constitutional right. But this government has, all of a sudden, all these people that I've mentioned, they've been denied uh, a bail pending appeal. Then we have cases like the case of Rizwan in Chipata, who's been detained, I think now he's coming to almost a year, and he has not seen the light of court. Again, Rizwan was very, um, was a very active member of the Patriot Front in Eastern Province. And he's been locked up for that very reason, that he should be incarcerated, locked away, and not be given bail. This is to ensure that there is silence from the opposition. And then there is fear for those that have been arrested or those that are, uh, are facing uh, uh, prosecution to watch their mouth and keep quiet. So there is a sense of fear that has engulfed our if, country. If, if, you are, if you are alleging that there is the hand of the executive in issuing instructions to, to the judiciary, don't you think that they can only do so much? They can only, I mean, unless the judiciary and all the officials in the justice system are gullibles, I mean, they're so gullible, they, they, they don't have a backbone. Don't you think that the executive, as you are alleging, surely you can't hold uh, people at ransom forever and uh, suppress the due process of the law? Do you think that this is sustainable? Yeah, that is why the Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishops has singled out the Chief Justice, Dr. Mumba Marila, and have appealed to him to ensure that that judiciary comes back to the Constitution, that that judiciary should not lend itself to the executive, that that judiciary should not be for hire for people from the executive who are waging political wars with their opponents. And at the, at the middle of all this is law enforcement agencies and the judiciary. So I'm glad that the Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishops, and this is a second issue. Remember uh, Osida, the controversial letter by Archbishop Teres Pompundu earlier this year, who called for sanctions. And among the people he put on the top was the Chief Justice. Right. Because the judiciary, the justice system, preserves national security, preserves peace in the country, re resolves conflict. When the judiciary goes, the country goes. Right. Let, let me, I mean, you have mentioned the issue of the pastoral uh, letter uh, that really uh, did a lot of rounds on social media and um, many uh, stream media. It was a huge talking point. I understand uh, many churches across the country in the Catholic, that particular Sunday following the publication. That was the message. That is what they, they, they read. Now, in the aftermath of that, we read in some sections of the media, the Minister of Infrastructure, Mr. Charles Mirupi, uh, who was quoted thinking that... Uh, uh, in his submission, he, he thought that the Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishops seem to have a soft spot for the Patriotic Front. He says they seem to be glorifying uh, your party always. Uh, how do you react to, to such kind of uh, a sentiment? First of all, the pastoral letter, you and I are keen readers. There's a book, Pastoral Letters in Zambia, and you will see the language of the church from the 60s. They've never wavered from their call to defend the poor to ensure that justice reigned in this country, that peace and security were not compromised, 
and that activities such as corruption, activities such as tribalism, were spoken against and reined in. So the Catholic Church has been very consistent. They are a thorn to every government that tra you know, transgresses the law, that doesn't take care of the poor, that engages in corruption, that engages in the abuse of human rights. They will find the change very, very difficult. And I personally was I'm very, very disappointed with three key individuals from the UPND government. One of them is the Secretary General, Batuke Imenda, who has refused to death to apologize for his careless and dangerous remarks that the foremost leader of the Catholic Church in Zambia, Dr. Alec Banda, who he called names and called him Lucifer, and to date he has not apologized. Neither has his president, President Akainde Ichinema, has not apologized to, for, for these very careless, very dangerous, very divisive remarks and defamatory remarks against the church and against Archbishop Dr. Alec Banda. Just the other day, I was listening to Kaloma member of parliament was on Radio Phoenix and he singled out Archbishop Alec Banda and called him a member of the Patriotic Front. I was so embarrassed that a member of parliament, member of the legislature, who professed to be a Catholic, could issue such careless remarks. And then we, we have uh, uh, this Charles Milupi, the Minister of Infrastructure, who is an alliance member of the UPND, who says that the, the, the statement is skewing towards the PF. If you look at the statement, there it is. Seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the open orphans, plead for the widow. That's the theme of the pastoral letter. Where is PF there? When they spoke about the political situation in the country, where they cautioned that this government must suspend constitutional and penal code amendments they are doing, that they must suspend the, the law, the bill number 17 of 2024 on hate speech because First of all, there's no consultation. Secondly, you are putting punitive measures up to 20 years just for hate speech. And you have not consulted anyone. And we had President Naka in says, I'm going to stiffen the law. And then you yield to that quickly to enact such a bad law, such an oppressive, archaic law. No one wants tribal talk. No one wants hate speech. But you can't have such an overreaching, such oppressive law being uh, enacted in our modern times as a democracy. On the issue of the constitution, we are remaining with 19 months before we go to our elections in 2026. How will you embark on the constitution amendments? How will you gather the, uh, the consensus required? How will you ensure that you have a consensus document on your table? Again, we wish to warn Honorable Nelly Muti, who thinks that parliament can on its own amend the constitution, where she's proposing that they want to uh, what they are calling, you know, those uh, uh, what they are calling um, non-contentious issues, and she thinks that those non-contentious issues must be uh, allowed to to be amended by Parliament without reference to the people. Again, she's treading on dangerous ground. Parliament is a creature of the Constitution; it can't amend itself. It has to be the people. If you look at the issues they raised, the cost of living crisis that Zambia is facing. One of the worst in recent memories. Look at the load shedding. Again, one of the worst in recent memory. Look at the bread basket, food and nutritional basket. How much is it? 10,300. Who can afford it? What's the price? What are the salaries and wages for our civil servants? How can our people afford things that are so expensive? Clearly, there are issues that have nothing to do with the Patriotic Front. Does load shedding have anything to do with the Patriotic Front? Does the current hunger that faces up to 6.8 million of our people. Is, is that a PF issue? All the issues that are inflation, run away within a period of one year, it's gone to 15%. Bank of Zambia keep, keeps on changing its NPR rate. Your loans that you have, especially for our civil servants and small businesses, they are no longer affordable because the interest is, is going up. Look at the volatile exchange rate. Again, are you going to say that's a PF issue? It is a failure of President Akainga Ichinama. It's a failure of his government. They have failed lamentably, and they wish to look for scapegoats. And one of the scapegoats is a patriotic flag. Yes.